to Lucy Alabar's in-process showing of Throw Me on the Burn Pile and Light Me Up. Um, Lucy is going to, what you're going to see is one of ten stories that are ultimately going to be published as a novel, but Lucy's interested in the stage life of these stories. And I'll let her talk more about the piece herself, but thank you so much for coming. Um, thank you all so much for coming. I think Jackie pretty much said everything. Um, yeah, Jackie said everything, so I'm just going to get started. Um, thank you again. It's really nice to see so many nice faces. All right. Um, so the piece I'm reading, uh, one of the ten, this one is Carl the Raping Goat Saves Christmas. My mom hates this one, <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. <clears throat> my daddy got mad and punched a hole in the wall on my ninth birthday, and that made us break. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. I'm going to start again. <clears throat> All right. My daddy got mad and punched a hole in the wall on my ninth birthday, and that made his right hand break and his secretary walk out. And that made him punch the wall with his left hand, and he broke that one too. And that was how I ended up my daddy's secretary the summer before fourth grade. <laughs> we worked from home in an office that little Steve the child molester built in exchange for services rendered. Our office window looks out onto a dry yellow field, and on the far side of the field is my daddy's burn pile. Daddy would dictate and he would punch the air with two broken hands. I would type as fast as he was talking. I never had to ask him to repeat. Our pit bull, Bobby Bowden, would guard us from on top of my feet. We had a good time. When Daddy got tired, he would stare out at his burn pile and plan his funeral. Daddy'd say, boss, there's two rules to laugh. Hell if I forget the first one, but the second one is check in and check out on time. No crying, no carrying on. I think with me, check out time's gonna be quick, boss. I think one minute I'm gonna be here, next minute I'm gone. Ronnie Lee Rummage from Dothan was the first murder trial Daddy and I worked on as a team. It started the Saturday before Thanksgiving when Ronnie Lee's mama called and asked us to defend her son from a first degree murder charge. She was sweet at first, but because of everything that happened, by Christmas I was pulling Winn-Dixie cards out of the mailbox that told us in neat, careful cursive, Mr. Jasper, I'm gonna set your whole field on fire. You don't give me my rightful truck back. And Mr. Jasper, that truck is mine's. And Mr. Jasper, your whole house gonna burn your whole field. Christ will have mercy on you, Mr. Jasper, but I will not. <laughs> my daddy said, that Jesus lady wants her truck back so bad she can show up at my door like a man. <laughs> Boss, when it's my checkout time, I want you to take my tractor and put it in front of my burn pipe. And then I want my banjo in the tractor seat. And then I want you to take my Seminoles hat and put it on top of my banjo so it's like my body's in my tractor, but it's my banjo. <laughs> and then play some good music, some Peter, Paul, and Mary. Let people smoke some ganja. No crying, just music. And then just throw me on the burn pile and light me up. I'm the boss man. Every Christmas, my daddy throws a taking the Christ out of Christmas party and invites everybody. <laughs> it's a lot of people. Old clients, other criminal defense attorneys, Mason from the feed store, everybody. 
No Jesus, because it makes Daddy angry and both his hands are already broke. <laughs> no Christmas carols, just the very best of Peter, Paul, and Mary. We can't even listen to the whole CD because Daddy loves the Day Is Done song so much that he hits the back button with his elbow every time the song's about to end. So today, we're making Taking the Christ Out of Christmas Dinner. Tell me why you're crying, my son. Mom is soaking ham and Dr. Pepper like that Bobby Bowden is trying to eat. Is Daddy's the kicking the cats and organizing all the stray fear. bullets into one singular Will kitchen drawer. The stay? My little brother, who everyone calls the son of Jasper, or just the son of, is wandering around the house with his ugly little guinea pig, Yo-Yo Ma. <laughs> My mom is spraying Bobby Bowden with her braids and rubbing it in. She says, The son of, you better put Yo-Yo back in that cage when the company comes. I don't want us looking like trash. <laughs> but we all silently know, even little son of, that it's not the beer cans or the multitudes of feral cats wandering the house. What's going to have people think we're trash is Carl who lives behind the burn pile and rapes things. <laughs> Animals, bushes, piles of clothes. But who Carl really has his eye on is our pig, Pig Pig. Carl rapes Pig Pig like how you can count on the sun setting every day at dinner time, <laughs> right outside the window. Pig Pig screams, but Carl just keeps on going. We all watch Carl headbutt Nice Dog, the old black lab, out on the porch. Nice Dog just lets him. That's how sweet a dog she is. <laughs> Look at Carl, Mama says. Carl thinks he's a dog, but he ain't no dog. Carl ain't no dog. Carl's a goat. Each ball is bigger than my head, and there are two of them that hit his ankles when he trots along the porch with all the dogs or the cats or the chickens. Carl's the only goat, so he just tries to be with everybody, but everybody's scared of him. Poor thing, Mama says. Daddy says, I don't like Carl. Carl's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy hits the back button with the CD player. Tell me why you're and day is done. Starts to fall over again. I know you're frightened and we all help like putting the cats out, sweeping up the fur, the putting the stray bullets into the kitchen drawer. But we're all thinking about Carl, outside the window, balls swinging like a pendulum. As the sun's about to set, as Christmas rolls in on us like a hurricane, as company's getting ready to come have dinner. We watch Carl rest his heavy yellow eyes on Pig Pig, and I receive a prophecy of hard troubles on the way. Daddy says, boss, why don't you and son of take Carl out behind the burn pile? Leave it some food so we don't mess with that pig in front of company. I don't want people thinking we're trash. <laughs> the son of says, do you have an egg I could hold? The son of likes to have an egg in his hand whenever he can. Not to eat it or throw it, he says he just likes to hold the egg. Daddy thinks son of's a little retarded, but Mama says it's too early to tell, and there sure ain't nothing we can do about it now. <laughs> Mama gives the son of an egg to hold, and we walk through the door with Carl's favorite food, which is pork skins. Day is done, gets quieter as Mama closes the door behind us. I take the son of's hand, and we walk with arms open to Carl, who's down on his knees trying to rape a leaf pile in the middle of the yard. <laughs> The son of holds pork skins in his extended hand and walks backwards, one hand holding his egg, the other gentle in front of Carl's face, and Carl follows, licking the son of's tender palms with his long black tongue, and I take us over the hills to the water. The facts of Ronnie Lee Rummage's case are these. Day after Thanksgiving, Dothan County police respond to shots fired on the river, and they come to find Ronald Lee Rummage, age 14, IQ 64, holding his fishing pole, waiting for something to bite with a pink chunk of youth pastor Davy Flowers' brain right on top of his knee. The Colt 38 and the rest of Pastor Davy was at the bottom of the river, and when my daddy told me about the case, I received a prophecy of five million tiny, clear fish tapping Davy's body like raindrops. 
Me and the son of started driving into Dothan a few times a week with daddy to gather the information. There's a big billboard you have to ride under to get into Dothan. And it tells us that Dothan is named for a passage of scripture, Genesis 37, 17, which says, let us now go into Dothan. <laughs> Daddy drove us into Dothan with two broken hands to the Rummage's house. Their yard was covered in plastic and car parts. Ronnie Lee's mama, Miss Rummage, was a big, wild-haired woman with a glass eye. Her face was so dry I couldn't tell how old she was. She chewed tobacco and delivered the information. Pastor Davy had been a good friend of the family. He got them church clothes. He didn't let anyone in youth group make fun of Ronnie Lee for being a retard. Ronnie Lee's mama didn't have any money to pay daddy, but she did have this brand new black Ford. She said the keys are in the ignition and for it to be his, daddy didn't need to prove that Ronnie Lee was innocent because Lord knows, but just prove <laughs> to the jury that Ronald Lee Rummage was too stupid to know what he was doing when he shot Pastor Davy in the middle of his face. Daddy said, that sure is a pretty truck. And Miss Rummage said, yes, sir, it surely is. So Daddy started going by himself to Dothan Juvenile Correction to meet with Ronnie Lee, and he could have left it at that. Ronnie Lee was too retarded to even talk. He'd just stare at you out of the corner of his eye and moan. He never asked Daddy to go to any extra trouble. And maybe that's why Daddy did, because Ronnie Lee Rummage couldn't ask anybody for anything. Halfway to the burned pile. The first star of evening has risen, and Carl and the son of and I all stop in the field, cold and covered in pork skin grease. Together we behold the star. And I received the prophecy of raging people owed a great debt shuffling towards me and the son of from far away. We spent weeks driving back and forth from Dothan in Daddy's new black Ford, the son of sitting in the back seat holding his egg. Every time we would pass the Dothan town sign, let us now go into Dothan, Genesis 37, 17, Daddy'd say, it's some stupid people in Alabama, boss. <laughs> We pulled into the rummage's front yard and Daddy punched my shoulder with his broken hand. Boss, we get inside. You say son of's got a pee and you gotta help him because he might be a retard himself. Boss, turn the corner and that's Ronnie Lee's room. Goddamn walls are covered in postcards, boss. So I want you to grab all the postcards you can. I want you to run back to the truck under top security, boss. I'm training you for United States Army. <laughs> I said, yes, boss. And Daddy said, you my man, boss. You my man. Ronnie Lee's room was like being in an aquarium. The walls were covered in postcards of fish. Fish alone, fish caught, fish dying, and swimming through the water like they were champion of the world. The son of and I tore off the postcards. We ran to the truck. We leaned out the window and stared at Daddy and Miss Rummage. They were both drinking beer. I tried to count the other kids wandering around the yard, but I've never been good at math. <laughs> Only boys, no girls. The son of held his egg and took in everything. Miss Rummage was crying and Daddy put his bandaged hand on her shoulder and then he walked back to the truck. Daddy waved goodbye with a cowboy smile, like he'd tip his hat if he had one, while he backed the Ford out of the trash lawn. Daddy turned onto the dirt road and his smile turned too. Daddy said, that woman trying to put a lie on me, boss. Can't no one put a lie on the boss man. Christmas Eve, the dry yellow field right in front of our burn pile. Small on the horizon, I see a dirty green truck puttering and growing towards us. And I receive a prophecy that none of this, my daddy, this land, my house, is guaranteed to stay with me. That it won't that I can't hold on to nothing. In the truck riding home from Dothan, the son of and I pulled out the postcards. On the back was the handwriting, I love you, you are the sunshine of my life, I thank God for you, 
And they're all signed, your friend, Davey. Daddy said, Jesus, H boss, connect the goddamn dots. The next day, Daddy came home and poured papers onto the table. They were simple cards like you'd get at Winn-Dixie and in neat cursive letters to Pastor Davey, asking for $200 for the dentist, $180 for the trailer to repair, a new truck to take the kids to school, all signed by Ronnie Lee's mama, Miss Darlene Romage. Daddy said, honest to Jesus, boss, you can't throw stones in Dothan because there ain't enough goddamn rocks. The son of it I watched in court as daddy pulled out the letters and the deed for the bland, brand new black Ford, all in exchange for Ronnie Lee Rummage to be taken to Pastor Davy's lake house every Friday, returned Sunday morning with new clothes and a check for his mama. Daddy faced the jury and showed him his open, broken palms and said, ladies and gentlemen, that man needed killing. <laughs> Daddy got Ronald Runny Lee off on self-defense, and he and his multitude of brothers were sent to be wards of the state. Runny Lee's been arrested a few times since then for setting fires, but no one holds it against him because the poor thing is too simple to even know what he's doing. And right after that was when those neat cursive notes in the mailbox started. You need killing, Mr. Jasper. You fun a burn. And that's what takes us to right now is Ronnie Lee's mama in her beat-up green truck, bigger than all of us, driving up to me and the son of with his egg, and Carl the raping goat in his pork skin grease, and our field of dry, thirsty grass, all together in front of the mighty burn pile. Ronnie Lee's mama stops the car and kills the engine, and I receive the prophecy that everything precious will be lost from me. Ronnie Lee's mama gets out of her old green truck She's holding a big can of gasoline in both of her red, flaking hands, and she looks like someone cut her hair with a lawnmower. Her glass eye is lolling up towards the single star in the Christmas Eve sky, but a real one is set straight on that burn pile. Carl's feet stomp the dead grass underneath us. I look at Miss Rummage, at her flat, cracker face, at her glass eye, and I receive the prophecy that I'm in trouble, but hers is bigger, deep as this whole sky. I hear my daddy say, boss, I could be dead any day now. Miss Rummage said, that truck is mine, and gasoline sloshes around her thick red ankles. The son of holds his egg close to his face. All that's moving in the field is the dead grass, reminding our ankles of the saints put to death by many fires. And then Miss Rummage points to the son of's egg and says, what you doing with that egg? You hungry? The son of shakes his hand, but she don't believe him. She says to me, is he hungry? The son of says, no ma'am, I just like to hold the egg. <laughs> Miss Rummage breathes in and out while her good eye traces over the son of's egg and lands there. I receive a prophecy of her lungs trying to push themselves out of her chest, like all of her insides want to bust out. And swiftly, the son of stretches his egg towards Miss Rummage, right in front of her pink boiled ham face. Miss Rummage stares at it for a moment, and then she shifts the gasoline to her left hand, and she reaches out her right. And together, Miss Rummage and the son of hold the egg, their palms facing one another, their fingers almost touching. And I receive a prophecy of people tired and poor beyond my imagination, blessed with time suspended not clawing for their life. Miss Rummage leans into her arm like she's drawing electricity from the sun of's egg, and then she breathes real hard like she's gonna break, and she drops her gasoline can and runs back towards her sorry green truck. The sun of stands with his egg and Carl and me, and we watch Miss Rummage tear over the hill and back to her trash yard with no money, and now no children in it. And the sun of and I take off running, me holding his hand, him holding his head, Carl the raping goat galloping ahead of us, his giant goat balls knocking his hooves, away from daddy's great burn pile, through the dry yellow field, through the front gate, to pig pig in the backyard, to our home far from the hurricane. Do you know we hear days done getting louder and louder, and we tear through the and front door, and I receive the prophecy that some people do need to but it's not us, not tonight. 
We slide onto the table. We feast on Mama's Dr. Pepper and Ham. Me, the son of our Christmas guests, and Mama and Bobby Dowden, and Daddy, his bandaged hands, who's the champion of the world. And then Daddy's nightmare comes true, and out the front window, Carl starts raping Pig Pig, and Pig Pig starts hollering, and we all see it. All the company. Mason from the feed store says, sweet Jesus. <laughs> Massey, who crossed state lines with a minor, says, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and Daddy says, help me, Lord Jesus. Help me. Help us. Help everybody. And for the rest of our lives, Mama talks about that night as when Carl the Raping Goat saved Christmas by putting Jesus Christ back into the <laughs> <laughs> I looked up Genesis 37, 17 in Mama's Bible under top security as Christmas swelled around us under the table. I was pretending to feed Bobby Bowden some ham. An old man found Joseph wandering the fields and asked him, what are you looking for? Joseph said, I'm looking for my brothers. They moved on from here, the old man said. I heard them say, let us now go into Dothan. So Joseph went into Dothan and he found his brothers there. Thank you so much for coming.